Hello and welcome back to another episode of Face Off. I'm Ben Davies and I will be the master of ceremony since Cabot Phillips always took credit for hosting our current champion show. And that champion is, of course, Mr. Michael Knowles. It's so wonderful uh, to be with you, Ben. Thank you for having me on my own show. I'm very excited to defend. What am I? I'm. It, we've done about three of these. I'm three for three right now. Three and oh. Wow. That is if our challenger has anything to say about it. And he is an anarchist, a blue jeans enthusiast, and is probably best known for being the greatest cash cab contestant in history, Michael Malice. Mm. Here is the cash that they give you when you are a cash cab winner. <laughs> so I brought it and on the back it says, in him we trust. <laughs> so I came prepared. I'm wearing, since we're talking about dictators, I'm wearing the shirt I got at the DMZ, the North Side. Wow. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and in North Korean clothes, I'm a size large, even though me and Ben Shapiro could share wardrobe. <laughs> Malice came to play. Yeah. And well, I've got a lot of historical artifacts, which I'll be dropping throughout the episode. I'm terrified. I, the, all the, the three other challengers at the beginning of this show, they were so easily vanquished. I have a true expert in dictators. You, you never start a land war in Asia, you never go up against a Sicilian when death is on the line, and you never take on an anarchist when you're talking about dictators, so. I, I, I feel like on behalf of the Jewish people, I have to compensate for Ben and his disastrous <laughs> performance against an Italian. <laughs> this is embarrassing. They made fun of me at Shul. I, I'm not even playing and I'm nervous. Now, Knowles has bested Walsh on Catholicism, Dave Rubin in pop culture, Ben Shapiro, like you said, in name dropping famous quotes from dead guys. And this whole thing is like the seventh circle of hell. And now we will find out once and for all, who knows more random facts about murderous psychopaths and democratically elected officials. This is Face Off, Famous Dictators. I've been prepping a lot by reading about Lincoln all night. <laughs> <laughs> On that note, Michael, I believe there's something you'd like to say to our fantastic audience. I absolutely would. When you want to protect your country from brutal killers, when you want to protect your home from all those bad guys, you got to check out Ring. Uh, we'll have more from Ring later. So pleased that Ring is here to support this show and to support you and your safety. But we'll get to that after we get to some dictators. All right. Question number one. As a child, his brother characterized him as having been sweet-tempered while fellow school pupils recalled him as, quote, mediocre, but pleasant. He went to school in Paris, France, before returning to his home country, taking power, and killing one-fifth of the entire country's population. Hmm. This is easy. He was a family man, went to school in Paris, France. You guys both done? I think yep. so. All right, Michael Knowles to you. Ho Chi Minh? No. Michael Malice? Oh. Correct answer is, in fact, Pol Pot. Mm. Did I just do a racist microaggression with my Ho Chi Minh answer? <laughs> that, mm, not off to a good start. Next up. This one is uh, from a different period. He is credited with popularizing the phrase, quote, the die is cast after his action that officially set him on the path to becoming dictator. His reign as complete dictator only officially lasted less than a year before he was assassinated. And he had the most famous side chick in human history. <laughs> I could say arguably there's been a lot of famous side chicks, but I do think this one is probably the most famous. That's true. All right, Malice. I didn't know, so I wrote Matt Walsh. <laughs> <laughs> I think close. If I'm right, it's close. Julius Caesar? Julius Caesar is correct. All right. That's okay. the Italian oh. kind of home court advantage. When I think dictator, I, I was thinking temporary. Okay, fair. Yeah. Next up, this dictator grew up Orthodox Catholic and studied to be a priest. Later, he successfully robbed a bank and his crew would kill an estimated 40 people in the escape. Later, he oversaw the deaths of 20 to 60 million people. Who is this dictator? He was raised to be a priest, robbed a bank. Robbed a bank and the death toll is estimated to be between 20 and 60 million people. I can see you both working hard here. About 10 more seconds. All right, Malice. It's Stalin. I also said Stalin just because of the numbers, but I didn't know any of that, that about him. <laughs> and it you is, guys want to see something cool? It is just it's Stalin. Stalin, right? Yeah. So this is a death warrant. Signed 
by Stalin's last executioner, Beria. <laughs> and it just speaks to how little human life means in these countries where they can't even waste good paper and good ink to kill you in their judicial system. But so You're what? saying that that's a, a print, a reprint? Of no, the... it's, it's not a print. This is the original death, death warrant signed <laughs> by Beria. Oh, my. Stalin's <laughs> third and last of his executioners. Man. What auction does one attend <laughs> to get auction to get that Stalin? That one is on eBay, actually. Oh, right. my gosh. Wow. Michael Malice, which one of these things tipped you off? Was it just the, the number count, or did you know about I the bank robbing? I was literally and- just this morning reading about Stalin's upbringing, like, on the can. Because <laughs> there's a book called um, Stalin Against the Jews, because towards the end of his life, he was going to initiate a new holocaust. But mm-hmm. uh, the doctors that he had blamed for his bad health because when you're 70 and a lifelong smoker, it's a conspiracy. He was torturing them, uh, and he was going to start a new pogrom, and then they had to take them out of the torture chambers to help him as he was dying from a stroke. Wow. Jeez. Yeah. Not a great dude. Not a great That's guy. Stalin, yeah. yeah. This one's a little longer, so buckle up. You can write down your answer as I'm reading this. As an avid reader and lover of literature, he had relationships with three Nobel Prize winning writers. Due to his busy schedule, he reckoned that since shaving took about 15 minutes of someone's time every morning, 5,000 minutes a year was a massive waste of time that he could use doing more important things. And it was reported by the Inter-American Human Rights Commission and the Wall Street Journal that this dictator oversaw 166 executions by submitting them to medical procedures of blood extraction. This blood was then sold to communist Vietnam at a rate of $50 per pint, with the dual purpose of obtaining hard currency and contributing to the Viet Cong communist aggression. Who was this dictator? All right, Knowles, what you got? Well, I'm just going on the no shaving. Is it Fidel? Malice? That's, that was my clue, too. The only dictator I could think of with, that, with a beard was Castro. Yep, it was the beard, Fidel Castro. Wow. Okay. That was the trickiest thing about finding these questions. Like, you can't say anything overt, but it's just the small hints, the subtle hints of the beard often give them away. It's crazy. Most of them are clean shaven. Like almost every dictator was yeah. very clean shaven. What's the score now? 3-3. Three, three. We have a tied ball game, gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, here we go. At age 27, he had plastic surgery to look like his grandfather. His father claimed he never defecated, and he reportedly keeps a, quote, pleasure squad of girls as young as 13, and in 2016 alone, he spent $3.5 million on lingerie and costumes for them. This guy is a dictator and also very strange. He's a he's a living dictator, obviously. Like Don't a, give him any hints. Like a currently serving dictator. Don't give him any hints. Mm. That's not fair. I'm the master of ceremony, malice, but you're, I'll try not to give any hints. What is this, the leg up program? <laughs> <laughs> and he's he's obvious. He's heterosexual. He's a super straight. Obviously, he's got all all this harem. Okay. I'm going to start that music here. Okay. All right. All right. Michael Malice. So you had a mistake in the question. Uh, the answer is Kim Jong-un. Um, Kim Jong-il never said he didn't defecate. If you read the North Korean literature, it says when he's out in the field doing field guidance, he doesn't take the time to go to the bathroom. But Americans were like, oh, they're so crazy. So it's a lot less crazy than it sounds. Oh, I thought the quote was from a defector saying that when he met him, he's like, oh, he's obviously lying. He doesn't. He does actually go to the bathroom. There's I, no way a defector met him. That's that's a good. See, I knew I knew you'd have a leg up, especially on this particular person. <sighs> this well, is, I wrote a book about yeah. <laughs> with the greatest title of any book possibly you, I've sir. ever read. Thank yes, you, I uh, I'm really ashamed. I totally forgot about the Kims. I wrote Bashar Assad like a jerk. Oh. I just figured, you know, his dad was in. You know, he comes from a political family. That's really lame. And really lame. Here we have a book. That has been signed by his grandfather, the founder of North Korea. The eternal Kim Il-sung. leader? Kim Il-sung. No, the grandfather. That's what I mean. The, the, the grandfather, the, the first guy. Don't they still the, pretend he's like the deity? He's the, pre- le- he's the president. He's still the president. Wow. <laughs> that's, that's impressive memorabilia. I'm more excited Thank just to see sir. what Malice is going to bring out each question. It's I know. like more excited to see who's going to win. All right. Next up. This dictator killed his brother to become leader and only has one recorded military loss while in power. This dictator's nickname was, quote, the scourge of God. He waged war with a dominant empire at the time just to win a wife. And during his rule, it's estimated that he killed three million civilians 
before he eventually died of a nosebleed after heavy drinking. Say the first part again. He killed his brother to become leader and only has one recorded military loss while in power. He was called the scourge of God. He waged a war to win a wife and he eventually dies, died of a nosebleed after a night of partying. I don't know, really, really grasping at straws here. All right. Yeah, same here, I'm guessing. Knowles. Was it Genghis Khan? Yeah. Malice? That's what I put, that's what I put too. It was the other guy, Attila the Hun. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> it was Dang the Hun. It. Yep. Oh, my first one, my first guess was Romulus, because I was really, really out of- <laughs> Oh, that's smart, that's a good guess. Because mm, technically, I, I could have probably tried to force the issue, but. All right, say la vie. Say la vie. Next up, this is a long one too, so buckle up. At age 10, he was expelled from a, from a religious boarding school for stabbing a classmate in the hand. <laughs> and another stabbing incident took place at his next school. He also admitted to knifing his girlfriend in the arm. While in power, he outlawed Freemasonry, exempted the clergy from taxation, cracked down on artificial contraception, campaigned for an increased birth rate, raised penalties for abortion, restricted nightlife, regulated women's clothing, and banned homosexual acts among adult men, and despite having many mistresses himself, he also put, to, put in place harsh penalties for adultery. After his death, samples of his brain were taken and sent to the United States for analysis with the intention to prove an, a, a hypothesis that syphilis was the cause of his insanity, but no evidence of syphilis was found. It's not Vlad the Impaler, but it would be fitting. If it <laughs> it would be very fitting, yeah. very poetic. All right, to you, Mr. Knowles. All right, this is, I'm just, this is not correct, but he sounds extremely Catholic, so I don't know, Charlemagne? Malice. Well, no, you, he said United States, and that really oh. made this tough. <laughs> That's because, so I had to guess, although I don't think this guy's a dictator at all, I just guessed Rasputin. That's a, that's a good guess. It was actually Mussolini. That was, Mu really? Yeah. They, oh. We, I thought Mussolini got dragged through the streets after they hung him upside down. Yeah. Yeah, but his br this was after the fact. Was his brain was later sent to the United States to be tested huh. to see if it was, was syphilis. That, in fact, made him insane. Wow. That's I also was kind of surprised because he stole a bunch of land from, oh my gosh. <laughs> so Mussolini had an election where the only choices were voting for him for yes, and he got like 98%. Who so got the other two? <laughs> <laughs> but it's just also funny, like, if you want to look like the good guy, this really isn't the way to do it. <laughs> That's very impressive. I, I also thought, I mean, he took a bunch of land from the church. I'm surprised that he, I, you know, I guess though he was a politician, you know? Yeah, allegedly. Stick and carrot. <laughs> yeah, he was at first at war with the church, and then he kind of made a bargain later. Huh. Yeah. Oh, man, I'm really, really upset I missed the Mussolini question. Now I feel like I'm totally sunk. I'm, sh I'm actually very shocked that both you guys missed that yeah. one. I thought one of those would tip you off. All right, on to the next. This dictator embraced the diversity of his newly conquered territories. He passed laws declaring religious freedoms for all and even gave tax exemptions for places of worship. This dictator really loved women and a recent historical genetics paper reported results which indicated that one in 200 men today are his direct descendants. He was responsible for the deaths of as many as 40 million people, roughly 11% of the world's population at the time. All right, you guys can show. <laughs> yeah. both I quick. assume this one's yeah. Genghis. This is Genghis. Yeah, yeah. This okay. is our boy Genghis Khan. What's the score? Four five. Malice is winning. Oh, oh how this many is more so questions? <laughs> if we, Michael, if you are you nervous right now? I'm are shaking. You? I'm absolutely terrified. How many more questions do I have to to redeem myself? I am not going to say. Ah! I want this to go down to the wire. Okay. Just All right. The daily wire. <laughs> <laughs> if you do tie, there is a bonus question, but I don't know if that'll happen. Okay. Okay. Next up, this dictator was married four times, including to one of the country's most popular movie stars. An expert on this dictator said, because of him, quote, there were several dozen cases of ritual cannibalism, and it was not about just eliminating your class enemy, but devouring them, end quote. Also, this dictator killed an estimated 45 to 100 million of his own people. Oh, it was ritual cannibalism. All right. All right. What you got? Mao? It's Mao. And the thing is, they were literally eating the rich in terms of the rich were evil. <laughs> oh, man. You shouldn't have given the death toll. That gives it away. And the death toll does give it away. It, I, when, when I heard the cannibalism, I, I was thinking of uh, Hirohito. You know, I, so they sometimes call him a dictator. But 
Yeah, he didn't. You know, he doesn't. He doesn't have that kind of body count. Yeah, this one did kind of softball it. But like the other, would you have gotten it if I didn't say the body count, Michael? I yes. I still would have. Oh, well, I guess both. I, I would have. <laughs> I still would have led leaned Mao, but I would have been much harder. Michael, I believe you need to thank someone. You know, I do. I gotta thank a lot of people. I'm very. I'm a very grateful guy. I'm especially thankful to Ring. Ring, an absolutely a wonderful service. You know I've been talking to you for years about the Ring video doorbell. That's where you can see and speak to whoever's at your door, wherever you are in the world. That's cool. What about the Ring alarm? What about not just the Ring alarm to protect your windows and your doors and your whole physical space, but what about the Ring alarm pro? Are you like me? Do you want to go pro? CNET calls Ring alarm pro a giant leap for home security. You're gonna be away from your home this summer. You're gonna be going on vacation. You're gonna to wanna to protect your physical home, your digital home, your entire family. Well, that's why you need to get Ring. Go to ring.com slash Knowles. That's ring.com slash K-N-O-W-L-E-S and keep out all the elements and all the bad guys. All right, on to the next dictator. Under his reign, perverse methods of torture were used, including murder, stoning, crucifixions, drowning, forcing the ingestion of lead, burying inmates alive, and tying naked victims around barrels surrounded by nails. He died after having killed an estimated three million of his own people, and his body was embalmed, and as of 2022, his body remains on public display. Wait, can you read that again? The, the, <laughs> the, the murderous stuff, or just the stuff about the people that he killed? The, the, the stuff about what he did to like his victims. So. The methods that he used allegedly are stoning, crucifixions, drowning, forcing the ingestion of lead, burying inmates alive, and tying naked victims around barrels surrounded by nails. And his body still on display? Yeah, his body was embalmed, and as of 2022, his body remains on public display. Okay. All right, see it. Is it Lennon? Yeah, the only dictator, the only two dictators I know of that are on display are Lenin and Kim Il Sung and Kim Jong Il. Yep, Lenin. I, th I think Stalin is still in bomb, right? Isn't he on display? No, Stalin's in the cart, the wall, the Kremlin wall. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Wait, so Le Lenin crucified people? Apparently, according to. No, he didn't. This is not true. Yeah, I don't buy this. I don't buy this for a second. The thing with it, this is, I, I, I'm doing a book right now <laughs> about the Soviet Union, and I know their tortures and crucifixion. That would be completely an obscenity in their ideology. Well, our brand new fact checker at the Daily Wire is going to be very, very disappointed when he hears that. Yeah. What but they our... did was they would tie someone's um, wrists and ankles behind them and hang them like that until the sockets popped out. But that's not crucifixion. Yeah. Well, that's, yeah, that's, I guess that's way better, right? <laughs> I guess our brand new fact checker will have a good time. And our soon to be brand new producer who's going to find these facts is going to have an even better time. So that's yeah. great. <laughs> this is fake news from the li <laughs> yeah. lying. Daily Wire, <laughs> which is failing badly. Yeah, but the uh, the lying naked on you know barrels, that's fine. But the crucifixion, you know, that we can't yeah, we can't, we can't attribute that to this guy. It wouldn't possibly do that. Yeah. All right, next up. This person was a gambling fan, which is somewhat odd given they were so religious. This was one of the few rulers who never had a child, and this person was responsible for over 300 religious dissenters being burned at the stake in what is known as the Marian persecution. <laughs> Damn it. Sorry, <laughs> pardon my French. Um, <laughs> All right, Malice, you're up. I, I had no idea so I just wrote Charlemagne. Really? <laughs> this is, you know, you're gonna kick yourself because he, he accidentally or unwittingly said it at the end. He said it's the Marian persecutions. Mary the First of England. Queen Mary the First, Bloody Mary. Bloody Mary. I'd never even heard of her. She's not a dictator, first of all. She was a wonderful queen of England, and the Protestant who chose these questions is obviously tilting the scales. But uh, anyway, if it gets me the point, I'll take what I can get. Yeah. It is tough using Google to find, like, the worst dictators in history because it just comes up, like, George Bush, Donald Trump, <laughs> and, like, you know, sitting through it. Mary was the only woman that was really popular. Being yeah, by the there. way. You, well, that's you, not true. We have Hillary Clinton, <laughs> and this is a signed copy of her book. It takes a village. So there are other women <laughs> dictators. That's the way. I'm now going to advocate book burnings, I think. The, <laughs> uh, you know, that sometimes people say that Queen Mary's uh, attacks on the, on the 300 dissenters, that that was a, you know, a horrible example of religious persecution. You know what I say it is? A good start. That's what I say. <laughs> All right. On that note, this next dictator lost two fingers by way of arrow after he tried to steal a sheep from a shepherd. It is estimated that this ruler was responsible for 17 million deaths, 
a staggering 5% of the world's population at the time. Allegedly, his coffin read, quote, whoever opens my tomb shall unleash an invader more terrible than I. Hitler invaded the USSR within two days of the excommunication of the coffin, and when the tomb was finally reburied, the Soviet Union, or the Soviet victory at Stalingrad shortly followed. Wait, repeat that last part about Hitler, please. After his coffin, which read, whoever opens my tomb shall unleash an invader more terrible than I, Hitler invaded the USSR and with, within two days of the exhumation, and when his tomb was finally reburied, the Soviet victory at Stalingrad shortly followed. Um. I really have no idea. There's two... I've heard this story before, but I don't... I just don't have any. Okay, I'm, I'm guessing. All right, what do you got? I'm guessing Kaiser Wilhelm. I said Ivan the Terrible. Because, I don't know, he's got a good name. Both wrong. It was Timur. Oh, Ooh. man. Timur. Never heard of him. That guy was a maniac. That was guy maniac. built towers out of human heads of his victims. Oh, that geez. guy was a complete lunatic. Oh, wow. Yeah. You know what they call that? A good start. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of all the dictators that I, that I discovered in this process, this guy was the worst and most unknown yeah. of all of them. Like, yeah, no, no. Very few people know this guy. That guy is truly, he was, he was the creme de la creme of psychopaths. He truly was. I'm sorry, I, I'm sorry I missed that. All right, next up. It's been reported that this dictator hated visiting the dentist. Dental exams were like a phobia to him. Thus, it's also reported that he suffered from gum disease and extremely bad breath. He was twice rejected from attending art school and afterwards ended up living on the streets. It is estimated that this dictator and his regime is responsible for over 20 million non-battle deaths. All right, throw it up. I'm gonna say Mr. Hitler. Hitler. Do you guys want to see something really cool? Oh, no. <laughs> I was waiting for this. Uh. Okay, so. Here's Ava Braun's locket. No. Yeah. This is one of his books from his bunker. I'm not going to show you the book plate for obvious reasons, <laughs> but the fact that it is now owned by a Jew from the Soviet Union and American, that's three strikes against Adolf, but I'm not joking. Blair White has also rubbed her genitals on this. <laughs> So this is a real big screw you to Adolf. Oh my god. <laughs> Michael, where where did you get that? There is a book called The Last Archives of the Fuhrer Bunker. Some guy stole a bunch of it and a bunch of it went on auction last month in Belgium, so I got three items. So you just got it. This is within a month. Yep. Or so. Oh my gosh. That yeah. is amazing. I'm just I, I'm frankly, I'm just glad that when Ben was reading that, he he said, you know, uh, whatever it was, 20 million, uh, you know, deaths broadly or whatever. And he didn't start, because when he starts, he starts uh, disputing all the numbers and everything. And it's just, he, really, it's very ugly what he starts. He does. You know, he some does. people, I say, Ben, yeah? stop it. I'll just give yeah. you the if high ones. If he's such a bad guy, why is he in jail? I know. <laughs> <laughs> all right, next up. Annoyed by his sick nephew's cough, this dictator had the child beheaded and later told his sister that, quote, he cured the cough. It's also been said that he sent his troops on illogical military exercises and turned his palace into a brothel. His favorite line was, quote, remember, I have the right to do anything to anybody. And maybe, most famously, he planned or promised to make his horse a council and even appointed a priest to serve the horse. Come on, Knowles, you got this. So, yeah, say the first part again. Uh, Sorry, Ben. Annoyed, yeah, got it. annoyed by his sick nephew's cough, this dictator had the child beheaded and later told his sister that he, quote, cured the cough. He also said that he's, it's also been said that he sent his troops on illogical military exercises and turned his palace into a brothel. His favorite line was, quote, remember, I have the right to do anything to anybody, unquote. And maybe most famously, he planned or promised to make his horse a council and even appointed a priest to serve this horse. Do you know this one? I yeah, of course. This is this is one on one stuff. You don't know this, no? What? No, I don't actually. I ah. Uh. I want to say something so bad. Don't say anything. You've given him enough help. <laughs> yeah, I. Uh. You... Ten seconds, Knowles. How embarrassing for you. Yeah, I. All right, whatever, man. Oh, I'm this no is, Dave Rubin. This is brutal. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> man, you're the just... power of Hitler's book. <laughs> yeah, jeez. All right, I don't. Yeah, I don't. I don't All right, Malice. It's Caligula. 
Yes. Caligula. Oh, Caligula. That's awful. The thing with the horse is it's not as crazy as it sounds. He just wanted like a second vote is my understanding. Oh, was that? Okay. What'd you that, write? That's actually, I just wrote, I, I only write Ivan the Terrible if I don't know what it is. Oh. So I, I, that's really, <laughs> that's, right one time. <laughs> that's awful. Oh man, Cal, I missed Caligula. Caligula. He's probably, what people would say is, are, is the most evil dictator from what I can tell from doing Google and Wikipedia. I mean, he was pretty bad. Yeah. He wait, was, wait, yeah. he's nowhere near as bad as Hitler and Mao. Well, of, co- of course, that's left-wing stuff. When you're searching, like, you know, on Google or whatever, that's what you'll get, wait, is that Caligula is the worst. He was maybe the most crazy, but he didn't kill a lot of people. Yeah. yeah. There were fewer people, I guess, but... No, but even proportionally, he yeah. wasn't, like, this butcher. Yeah. No, he was just, just a nut. There was a lot of people that died. I deleted some of that stuff. All okay. right, next up. This dictator named a city he founded after his horse. Another horse lover. This dictator is said to have severed the Gordian Knot. He also famously never lost a battle, only stopped conquering territory after his army demanded that they turn around and go home. All right. Show it. Alexander the Great. Alexander. Alexander the Great. That is correct. Yep. Alexandria. It's also the worst movie ever made after him. (laughs) That's fair. All right, next up. This dictator wrote a best-selling romance novel. I wonder if Michael actually has this on his shelf. Mm. I don't, but I know who it is. <laughs> okay, well, we got four more clues, or three more clues. After his daughters fled to marry, this dictator tricked them to return home with promises of forgiveness before he tortured and killed both his son-in-laws. After a small attack on his motorcade was put down, this dictator had over 400 of the attacker's friends and family members tortured and put to death. He also hated Fruit Loops. <laughs> Wait, crap, it's it's one of two people and I'm blanking on which one. Ugh. He They fled to marry? Yeah, they fled with, I guess he did not approve of who they chose, and then he tricked them into coming back and then killed them immediately. Like marry like the mother of God? No, no, like to wed. Oh, to marry. Oh, yeah. The A was was not was not pronounced correctly. <laughs> English is my second language. Yeah. Well, make it your first. <laughs> what? They fled to yeah. okay. You know you're a Catholic yeah. when you hear to marry and you're yeah. you the Virgin Mother. <laughs> that's, that's the first place your head goes. I don't Okay, hold on. I actually I actually do think I know this one. Gosh, I don't know. I've heard this story, but Malice looks pretty confident. I got 50-50 on this one. <laughs> I I don't know. All right, Malice, what you got? I thought I put Saddam Hussein. Yeah, I put Saddam. It's Saddam Hussein. Is it? Yeah, it is. Oh, man. I almost, you can see, I started to write Mubarak, and then I was like, nah, but like, same region. And then Saddam, wow. Okay, that's good. All right. This one's a long one, too. My adrenaline is through the roof right now. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) All right. Since he was born from a second marriage for the sole purpose of his father conceiving an heir, a local priest predicted that, quote, out of this evil deed, an evil child will be born, unquote. He is credited with creating what is believed to be the first secret police of the time who were given complete immunity for the actions they took. In one infamous account, his lawless force tortured and killed up to 60,000 innocent civilians, many of whom were tied to sleds and pushed into icy rivers for sport. This dictator later died while playing chess. Oh gosh, okay, I'm guessing. Only for producing an heir. His father had a wife, and she could not bear children, so he divorced her and took another woman so he could have an heir, which was illegal at the time. All right, you ready? I hope you stuck with your guns, Knowles. I did not, no. Henry? Henry VIII? Nope. Knowles, who you got? Ishmael. I don't know. Ivan the Terrible. No, no! Are you kidding me, guys? (laughs) I got all this. Oh my god, that's beautiful. Unbelievable. (laughs) I, w- I thought it was a funny answer. What, oh. what would have been the clue? The, the chess or the, oh. the frozen rivers? Like, That's brutal. What did well, I have? No, because uh, when you said illegal at the time, I thought the whole point of Henry VIII founding the Anglican Church was to allow divorce. That was what misled right. me. I, right. Apparently, I don't even know what area this was where Ivan was born, but it was a very religious area and the, they were not allowed to have divorces. You know the problem? Uh, I'll tell you the reason I didn't, I didn't get it. I don't know anything about Ivan the Terrible. I just, <laughs> I've been kind of bluffing, you know? Okay. <laughs> All right, here we go. This leader divorced his first wife because she could not bear him a son. <laughs> he, he survived the first ever assassination by bomb attempt, which hmm. killed 40 people, but not its target. He was one of the few leaders to be removed from power 
but rather and was not killed, but rather died of natural causes after being banished. Thought that was going to be a Henry the Eighth kind of layup, you know? You want to read any of these again? Yeah, read the whole thing again. I don't All know. right. This leader div divorced his first wife because she could not bear him a son. He survived the first ever assassination attempt by bomb, which killed 40 people, but missed its target. He was one of the few leaders to be removed from power twice and not killed. Rather, he died of natural causes after being banished. 10 seconds? Y'all both done? Yeah, I yeah. guess. All right, show him. I'm guessing Henry VIII. Napoleon? It's Napoleon. Hey, oh yeah! Oh, wow. It yeah. was the it was the bomb. I felt it would be more more uh, current, and uh, the banishment. That was the only that was the only giveaway. I knew if I oh that's a good clue. The banishment, Elba. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I, if I said Saint Helena, I would have given it away. For right. Sure. Yeah. Okay. All right. So well, are we are we tied again? You are not going to believe this, gentlemen. This is the first ever tie on Face Off, which means wow. thank goodness this morning my way in, I have a bonus card with two very very important questions. What if we both get them right, or it's like one and one? What if we just tie it uh, again? <laughs> there's no way. To... What about the third question? <laughs> I do. I actually have a backup, but I, there's no way this is going to be a tie. Okay. Okay. You're going to try to get as close to this number as possible. This dictator. Six million. <laughs> this, you're going to get as close to this dictator's body count as possible. Are right, you ready? Okay. <laughs> what is the current Clinton body count? <laughs> So you can get the closest to the most widely accepted number okay. of the Clinton oh, Among scholars, count. you mean. Of, yeah, uh, scholars. Of yeah. Uh, Wait, we're not including like him bombing the pharmaceutical factory. You mean like people he's alleged to have murdered, right? Right. Okay. <laughs> That's an important distinction, <laughs> actually. It is, though. Yeah, it was Iraq, too. I mean, yeah, okay. This is so um, great. I cannot believe we got to this bonus question. Wow, I'm I'm pleased about that. Uh, is it? Is it, hold on, before we, is it the closest without going over? Or is it the absolute closest? We'll do the absolute closest. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I can't wait. All right, <laughs> show it. Uh, I guess I wrote seventy. I wrote one hundred and eight. It is one hundred eighty-six. Michael Knowles yes! is the champion once again. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh my gosh. That is great. <laughs> I can't believe you got to that. <laughs> oh man, I. First of all, 186, that's awesome. Yeah. Second of all, I... It's a good start. I, it's a good start. <laughs> I really thought at Ivan the Terrible, that was it. I had I had given up my... So that's it? I win? That's it? You win. Oh and my gosh. As the vic to the victor goes oh. the spoils, which means Michael Malice will read a 30-second pitch yes. for why people should listen to <sighs> The Michael Knowles Show. That was the not only the most formidable challenge we've ever seen on this show. That was the most my heart has beaten. That was the most <laughs> adrenaline that's pumped through my veins, and that was very, very impressive. And the I, the memorabilia are out of this world. My heart was racing faster than Anne Frank during the day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. I can say it. I went. To you can Cuba. say it. You can say it, and you own the book, so you can. No, that's yes. fair. Michael, thank you for coming on. Ben, thank you for inviting me onto my own show. Oh, of course. It's so good to have you, Michael Knowles. And Michael Mouse, before we leave, is there any more memorabilia that we didn't get to that you want to show the audience? Yes, and I'm surprised you didn't ask a question about him because we have here, I guess in Daily Wire terms, he's not a dictator. I have a book, an English book by Pinochet, and it mm. is signed by him. What? Right there. Did, was this also like eBay or something, or did would it have to? This be was uh, just a book, uh, like a bookstore had it consigned. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome. So I, I love that the absolute proof that according to Daily Wire, Pinochet did nothing wrong. <laughs> yeah, no, of course, absolutely. Now, if you had some Allende stuff there, that would be different. But you yeah, know. yeah. Well, before uh, we go, Michael Malice, will you please give us a thirty-second pitch to the audience of why people should listen to the Michael Knowles Show? Michael Knowles is one of the most original, intelligent voices in podcasting today. He always has guests where he asks innovative questions and has intelligent conversations rather than focusing on talking points and yelling past each other. It's a great way to listen to right of center points of view while at the same time having a host who is charismatic and collegial to his guests. Wow. That was 
That was the first time any of those have ever been nice and <laughs> sincere and not mean. That was, thank you. That was very nice. But I lost fair and square. <laughs> you, you did. No, you, I, you, and so you get another point over Walsh and Ben and Dave and all those jerks who gave me backhanded compliments. That I relate. That was very sweet. Thank That's you. That's like being the tallest dwarf. <laughs> Well, thank you so much, Michael. Well, there you have it. Please write in the comments section and let us know who you'd like to see and what topic you want to cover in the next episode of Face Off.